It's not very often that one measurement alone is indicative of the precise care that you need. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Hutchison, and this video is an introduction to a series that we'll be doing on the difference between when somebody might need upper cervical chiropractic, full spine adjusting, cervical or full spine curve correction, treatment specifically to the muscles and tendons that can become frayed or damaged or shortened or adhesed, or if they need regenerative medicine, such as prolotherapy, PRP, or stem cell treatment. And it's pretty interesting because many people call and they connect with us and they say, hey, I've been going to an upper cervical chiropractor, which is a great place to start. Very often an upper cervical chiropractor can resolve many conditions, neurologic conditions, and it can get better. But let's say you've tried one of a great upper cervical chiropractor in your area, or even two or three, because you thought, hey, it's just, well, I need to be adjusted from this little bit different angle. If it's one degree up higher and the headpiece is down just a little bit more, it'll be just right. But you've exhausted this, right? You've tried this and you just happen to fall outside of the ability of upper cervical chiropractic to fully resolve your issue. Next, you said, well, maybe I find somebody that uses an impulse IQ, and maybe it was actually my upper rib that was pulling on my neck, and I got adjusted with the impulse IQ, and you know, we worked on you know, abdominal bracing, I pulled the spine into a better position, um, I adjusted lower in the neck, and well, I felt a little bit better, but I still have symptoms. So now, you've dug deeper, and you're trying something like clear scoliosis, or chiropractic biophysics, or the curve correction that we utilize, which of course, there's some overlap in all of these techniques, but you've tried curve correction and you've gotten your spinal curve a little bit better and it's showing your vein is opening a bit and your, your head is being held over your body, but you're still not feeling right. You might feel great for a couple days, but then your right shoulder starts pulling on your spine and you have suboccipital pain, you feel the burning and you're getting the blurred vision. So now, next, you've tried somebody that does dry needling to the muscles and the tendon junctions where there can be fraying in those tendons. Because think about this for a second, let's just pause. So when you get injured, let's say you're in a car accident and boom, your head goes flying. And you were somewhat aware of the injury as it was about to happen. You quickly, for the last second, you saw that car coming in and boom, you, you braced, right? What's the first thing that gets injured? Is it your muscles and your tendons or your ligaments? So if you had time to brace even a little bit, your muscles take the brute of that force and the tendons where they insert to the bones are the first thing to experience some fraying or tearing. Muscles are considered red tissue, so they heal very well, but the tendons are white tissue. They do not heal that great on their own. And so secondarily, when the muscles and tendons have been exposed to a force they cannot tolerate, then, the excess force goes to the ligaments, which can be torn, can have micro tears, can be injured. And that's where you would go into regenerative medicine, whether it's prolotherapy, PRP, or stem cell treatment. Very often, we find that one of the spots people are really under assessing is rehabilitating those tendons. And you can't do that purely by exercise alone. You have to do something that facilitates healing in that area, whether it's using some kind of a laser that could, or you could do dry needling into the you know, tendon area where it's frayed to help bring some strength and healing to that area. But that's an area we wanted to bring to light in this first video of this series where we're gonna delineate the difference between when does somebody need upper cervical chiropractic versus full spine adjusting versus cervical or full spine curve correction versus dry needling or other ways to treat the musculotendinous junctions for muscles or tendons that have been injured or damaged and caused abnormal pulling and tightening, which can reproduce all of the symptoms of cervical instability. Or lastly, when you would be a good candidate for regenerative medicine, such as prolotherapy, PRP, and or stem cell care. And lastly, if you've exhausted these conservative measures, when you would be a great candidate for a neurosurgical or a surgical consultation. So thank you so much for watching. I know it's a lot of information and we're just getting started on this small series where we'll really try to help bring some clarity. And because so many people ask us, they say, Doc, 
I have all these symptoms, you know, should I keep trying upper cervical or should I do something different or do I need to go right and get this bone marrow procedure? You know, we want to try to bring some clarity and help people see that it's not very often that one measurement alone is indicative of the precise care that you need. And more so, you have to put together the whole picture. And often, if you're in at least a reasonable state, you should try with something that's one of the most conservative methods. But we'll share more as we continue. Thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to staying in touch.